wonderful good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And if you'd allow me just to take two minutes to share a little story that's not part of my presentation. Um, as you all know, the Tokyo Olympic Games were scheduled for 2020, correct? And um, due to this little thing called COVID, right, it was this little thing, <laughs> they decided to shift it out by a year. Now, what many people don't know and many of us do know is that COVID had a direct impact on many of our lives and many of our friends and family. About five weeks before the Olympic Games last year in Tokyo, one of our coaches decided to get COVID. You know, because that's what we all choose, right? I mean, when you've got nothing else to do with your time preparing for Olympic Games. This coach ended up becoming very, very ill and by the grace of God, was able to find himself a place at a hospital in Pretoria. When he got to the hospital, there was no beds available, and they propped him into what I believe was a storeroom where the cleaning materials and stuff were stored at that stage. The first person, and they, they put oxygen on, and the first person that he opened his eyes to happened to be an athlete that he coached who was now a doctor when this doctor was at school, your age. The second doctor that crossed paths with him looked at him and said, brother, you did not come here to die. What many people don't know, that coach is the coach of Tatiana Schoenmarker, who brought back two medals for South Africa. That doctor is Dr. Taban. And um, truthfully, I didn't know if I'd ever get an opportunity to meet the doctor to actually say thank you. Thank you for being a part of, of saving the coach. Thank you for not stepping down when the challenges were tough in our country. Um, what the doctor also did, and I don't even know if he remembers that, is at that one stage in that week that the coach was there, they were about to ship him off to Richards Bay in an ambulance. And the doctor walked in and said, not a chance, this man and these other patients are staying here. And he very quickly put together in one of the wards that was standing open, a makeshift COVID ward, and started a process of treating those patients by pulling together people. He never let it lie down. And um, this book, uh, Dr. Lombard gave me one of your sign books. It says, never be afraid of taking a chance. Be the best in your work. We'll be going to Coach Rocco. Unfortunately, he's, he's currently sitting in Birmingham, England, at the Commonwealth Games with Tatiana that officially started last night. And they start competing uh, from today, the swimming events. So I just thought it an opportune moment to say thank you in front of a group of people to everything you've done and everything that you've meant to people that you may not have known at that stage that you contributed to Olympic medals. So thank you, sir. Thank you. So now that we've had the warm, hard, soppy, emotional part of me, let me share a little bit about what I'm passionate about as sport at the University of Pretoria and uh, let's kick on to a little video. It's more than just the dream. It's about believing that greatness is attainable. All you need to do is believe and we will make it a reality. Doesn't matter who you are or where you're from, you are never too young, you are never too old to become great. All you need is someone who believes that you are capable. Someone who will elevate you to greater heights. Determination, sacrifice and expertise prepared to unleash your true potential. 
And when it gets harder, you'll remember to run faster, kick harder, leap further, and honor the strike as if your life depended on it. Touch sport will elevate you to greatness. Question is, do you have what it takes to be great? So if that doesn't give you goosebumps, I guess nothing will, right? <laughs> What's really cool for me about watching that video every time I do, and, and watching it specifically today, I, I referred to Tatiana and them swimming at the Commonwealth Games. The two judokas that were there are actually twins, and um, they are currently at the Commonwealth Games representing South Africa in judo. Uh, the two netball ladies that you saw in the video are also at the, the Commonwealth Games, Shadina and China. Um, and representing the Protea netball side at the Commonwealth Games as we speak. And um, whilst, I, yes, I share, and, and it, it's all excited and we talk about performance, it's not only about performance, and I'll share a little bit about what it means also to be part of a broader picture of sport. Our Vice Chancellor and Principal has, has given us the mandate and said he wants us to be the powerhouse for sport in Africa. In my mind, we need to be a lighthouse a beacon, a place where people look to to say, what is this thing called sport? Whether it be professional, uh, student, or recreational sport that we can go to and understand and learn from here at the University of Pretoria. A lot of people have written various things. People want to know what makes us tick. We provide a fair amount of media value to the university on an annual basis as well. But this is what it's about. It's about student athletes also graduating. In this picture, you can see AK, he just uh, won, he came fifth at the uh, World Championships again at the uh, Oregon that was last week. Um, Emily Gray, three-time Paralympian, she's currently living in New York and she uh, is now started competing in disabled rock climbing because, well, why would you want to go up the stairs, eh, doctor? Let's go up over the mountain. Um, various other athletes, Talia Schmidt, last night at the varsity football, um, as I was coming out, unfortunately a bit sad, we, we didn't have a great result, uh, next minute Talia is standing there, and Talia has just returned from Morocco where she was part of Banyana Banyana that won the African Cup of Nations for Women. She's got two postgraduate degrees from the University of Pretoria. Pumi Mbandi, qualified chartered accountant, works for PwC. She was the flag bearer last year at the, Common, at the Olympic Games for South Africa with Chad Leclerc. These are just some of the student athletes that we are very fortunate to have had come through the University of Pretoria. You may have also seen Tatiana in that picture as well. Just some of the stats. This is a little bit about sport at the university. When we talk about internal leagues, to give you an idea, in the internal league for netball this year, so when I say internal league, I mean residences, day houses, societies, faculties, private accommodation, competing against each other for fun, for recreational activities. This year we had 72 teams register for the netball internal league. We, la we launched the internal league for soccer on uh, Tuesday. We have 40 male teams and 16 ladies teams that have registered to compete in the internal league this year. That's just an example of just some of the things. So yes, I share about performance, but I also share that it's also about the recreational components as well. These are just some of the performances of, of our different teams. USA is University Sports South Africa. It's our national championships. It's where all the universities can compete and send their best athletes to and their best teams. This is just a, a snapshot of some of the performances over time. Luckily, you're all above average education, so you can all read. So that's also a good thing, right? Um, that picture for me is at the bottom uh, right-hand corner. Such a special photo. You may recall last year at the Commonwealth Games when Tatiana claimed the gold medal, there was another South African swimmer who claimed the fifth position in that same race. That was Kayleen Corbett. Kayleen is final year B.Ed. here at the University of Pretoria. And uh, they're teammates, they train together, they're currently both uh, going to sum it up in, in 
Birmingham as well. So the question is, well, where do our teams compete? Like any club, they will also compete in club competitions, either provincial competitions, national competitions. They will also compete in university sport competitions. You may have seen on Supersport, the Supersport Schools apps, you would have seen things like Varsity Football, Varsity Cricket, uh, Varsity Cup Rugby, Netball, and a variety of different platforms. So that's where our first teams get an opportunity also to represent the university at various levels. Our programs within our different clubs, they operate across a variety of spectrum, everything from junior programs right through to senior programs, right through to a football team that competes in the national first division, which is, and we were one goal away from qualifying for the PSL this last season. Unfortunately, didn't do that, but it is what it is. Welcome to sport. Um, sometimes it just takes one goal, right? Um, we have various um, teams that compete. Our students in the university have opportunity to, while they are studying, also pick up practical experience in their different spaces where they uh, would like to operate. Not everybody here would want to be Tatiana, but some of you might want to be involved in a sports space and, and apply your trade either as a sports manager or one day as a physiotherapist or biokineticist or a variety of different uh, areas. So there's opportunities to do so as well. We've got various partners with one, the High Performance Center, where we have our own sports hotel and hotel for, for general public. Uh, people can come and stay there, teams come in, uh, stay. We've, we'll be hosting, for example, the African Netball World Cup qualifiers next month. We'll be hosting the African Archery Championships in November. Teams from around the continent will be staying there um, and utilizing those services as well, whether it be sports science and medical services. And then a variety of academic partners. So for example, the physiotherapy students getting practical hours working with and alongside tux athletes and student athletes, for example. Um, there you can just see a list of, of just a, a small snapshot of our sporting facilities. We're very fortunate uh, to have the, the, the facilities and the campus we do have. Um, and we have a variety of sporting facilities that can host. Uh, last night at the uh, Varsity Football, we had about 3,000 um, spectators pitching up to come and watch. And uh, it was really cool just to have that vibe and the, and the buzz again on campus. I share this picture often, and I want to just draw your attention to it. So as you sit here right now, you see this grass patch. This is the old arts building at the top here. You are seated currently right there. This... Where you are right now is the first site of the sports facilities at the University of Pretoria. Uh, we've moved over a number of years ago back uh, to the LC de Villiers and the UP Sports Campus, which is about two kilometers from here. What's also quite interesting is as you walk out here today, and you, I saw some of your groups were doing the campus tour, as you go around here and you go past the old the theology building, just over there is a plaque and it shows the, um, there's a, mem a memorial point there which says this is the first uh, pavilion of the University of Pretoria uh, just next to this building. So you can see our first ever grass track. Currently we have a Mondo track. Mondo is the make of track that is used, for example, at the Olympic Games uh, World Championships. So this is what it's about. It's about pulling together opportunities for students, whether you're recreational or elite, provide a platform and an environment where people can also not only live out their academic dreams, but also sporting dreams, but also their wellness dreams. And I think that is ultimately what it's about for us at Tuck Sport. So I trust when you do join the University of Pretoria, most of you in 2024, and you're studying the degrees that you would like to have studied, that at some stage you make your way to sport and you find a way of getting yourself just to be challenged, not only academically, but also in another space. And uh, I trust it's been a good experience and a good opportunity for you this last couple of uh, hours here at the university. And I really wish you well in your, your grade 11 year. Um, and hopefully we'll see you in, in one of our sporting environments in years to come. Thank you very much.